It's a beautiful thing. It's a new day that you have given us life, O oh God. Father, sometimes we take these things for granted, but we thank you for the life that you have given us. We are not indifferent to that other people have left, but it is because of your grace and love you have shown us that we are still living today. Oh God, today we have come to cleanse our thoughts, and that is that those are the righteous acts of the believers. Lord, as we are going to receive your word, we pray that it cleanses, it cleanses us, because that is your word. And that's what it does. And Lord, as we are going to receive it, and as we are going to do our praises and worship, and all of the service, we pray that you may intervene. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You are welcome in the house of the Lord. Let me have some praise. I want to hear a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. What about you? I want you to show these people what it means to shout for the Lord. Put on your mics and we shout for the Lord and we get to know what we are talking about.
And so Jesus is the solution to every problem. Yes. To every need. Yes. Woo! Today in the morning I read this scripture. And he said, um, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. That do not be anxious about any man that you go for shooting. But do what? Come on, help me. But pray what? Pray. Uh-huh. 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 Thanksgiving. Make your request known to who? Woo! To the Father of hosts. Woo! To the Pierre of the heavens and the... To the Pierre of the heavens and the... Father of you. I worship the Lord. Stop worship the Lord. He is the center of each and every one. Worship the Lord.
He loves us so much. He's doing something new. He's turning the lights around. He's going to be our center. So I want us to sing and we need because the champ is a creator and protest that he's doing something new.
там готовы приступать. Значит, конец. Это транспорт, который я считаю. Это проверить твою фамилию. Это так, братство. 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 Это Let's pray for this one. We must The best word the Lord is going to speak to us. To make us do things that He wants us to do. And as a church, let's continue to uplift Israel. Let's ask God to defend it. These times, everything we leave to the Lord. There are no battles that we can take on our own.
thank you, our service leader. I've come to testify that I please ask that you clap for our service leaders. And then just first I'm, I'm service leader, I'm working within my testimony. Kindly I request that every parent whose child has been on stage, please stand up and recognize you. Every parent. Every parent whose child was up here, please clap for them. And raising a godly heritage. May the Lord remember your sacrifice. May the Lord guide your children. Hallelujah. I work on an adolescent girls program and one of the components is also parenting. Mm -hmm. So I really know from your heart what you go through as parents, but you've raised a godly heritage. May the Lord remember you. I can I come to testify of the Lord's healing of my uncle. I shared with you how I have an uncle who has smoked for 50 years, and Uncle Paul knows him, and Uncle Sam Bagonza knows him. But from the 26th of October, Sam has going through a challenge. As a family, we kept praying. But I want to thank the Lord so, so much. I want to thank the Lord on my knees. Sorry, I came with my thanksgiving, but I couldn't bring it because of like, coming up here. But I've learned that I can even order on a board with my well, to, to say that thank you, Lord, Amen. from my heart to the heavens, Amen. and I just want to tell you that journey. His lungs were just worked up was on a half lung, and for medicine that he wouldn't survive. He was in ICU for three days. He kept deteriorating. I remember the last time we went, my aunties were talking that he's going and preparing Eternal for burial. But the Lord has been so faithful and has Amen. used that situation to turn my family to God. On Christmas, I led my family through a service, and we prayed and we forgave. And from my heart to the heavens, I really want to tell the Lord that you are a healer. Anyone who has a family member who is not well, may you know that our Lord is above medicine. The last review that his nurse came at home, because he was on oxygen for over a month. And I kept telling the Lord, I want appetite up, I want oxygen off, cylinders at home, you guys went through COVID. For us as a family, we didn't go through COVID, so I did no cylinders at home. But the Lord took him off the cylinder on 10th December, and now he can move to the gate and escort his, his visitors. Wow. Lord, I thank you that you're a miracle worker. Lord, I thank you that you're a healer above every situation. And I just want to say that when you call to the Lord in mercy, because I told the Lord as a family, we have seen, we've been smoking, we are atheists, we don't, but Lord, I said, I come on a mercy seat and ask for your mercy and grace. So, let's, I encourage you to just come to the Lord with mercy. And the Lord did it. Heavenly Father, I thank you for healing Uncle Dick, for restoring us as a family. And Lord, as we stand here that you're doing something new, I know that my family will be completely for you. And Lord, I also say from my heart to the heavens that I thank you. Yes. Lord, I also thank you for the men and women who stood with me when I was oh, crying. I thank you for Uncle Paul later. Lord, may you remember him. Lord, for the many men and women. You've told me that when people are going through difficult times, we will not only send messages, but we will be physical in their lives. Oh. Thank you, precious King. Thank you, mighty God. Amen. Come on, let's love for the Lord. Alright, um, let's take a moment, it's an important announcement. Okay. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome Pastor Bolsa. Wow, let's appreciate. Um, the gentlemen, if you must use the toilets, we are all using the ladies for today. Be only because of the ongoing construction of the other side. Thank you. Wow, we are proud of you. Next of young men and young ladies on the stage. So, so exciting. Any parent who is up like as I am. Any parent, any granny who is up as I am. This is where we are going to go as GFM Church. 
that our children all will serve the Lord. We're proud of you, young men and young ladies. May God richly use you now and the days to come. And we as your fathers and mothers grow older, you guys are rising up. Any parents say amen. amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Once again, I want to welcome you uh, to uh, God's service, and I'm sure that uh, you're in the right place at the right time. And I'm sure the Lord is with you and with all of us. And let's one more time appreciate our young people for leading us in praise, in worship, and in thanksgiving. I mean, it's somewhere to go. That means we are very rich ahead of us. Come, let's work for the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a way to go as we go in the days ahead of us. Just again to thank God for uh, the progress that we're seeing uh, in construction. We thank God for His divine grace. Uh, the, uh, how many of you have passed by the church building, the structure? How many of us passed by? This morning, thank you. Other uh, things we'll do it at the end. Uh, please pass by uh, uh, as we're leaving. Now, the update is that uh, the roofing too, uh, was done almost more or less last week. That is the laying of the iron sheets. But there's two more details. Somebody was asking me, when are we in the church? Now, uh, yes, you do the roofing, but there are other details involved. And actually, right now, we are below. We have a day to clear on that phase almost 70 million, about 70 million, which we need to make sure we do the gutters, we do the, uh, uh, there's a cable, uh, rovers, uh, they're waiting, uh, we want to make sure we do the details. But the about 17 months, so we need a miracle to have it done, and we pray that God be able to provide it. Those of you who have given thus far, please clap yourselves. Come on, go ahead, clap yourselves. Your generosity, your giving, your prayers. Uh, and that's what the only say that some of you haven't done, give, that you haven't given, but you have uh, prayed and fasted. If you are there, I will still appreciate you uh, for that very, very much so. But also, we thank God for the miracle of the bathrooms. It has been one of those things, uh, Vista comes and says, so Where are the bathrooms? You, you point, but you're not very confident. But somewhere you point, look at the options. How many of you have passed by? Not yet? Okay. Thank you so much. After the service, okay. Uh, please pass by. God has done the impossible that nobody can do. I want to appreciate our brethren, whom God has really used. All of the single little family, they have taken that project on. Now, what can I understand about the sacrificial giving? Really sacrificial. Senior, you and your wife. Uh, Huntington and your wife, and we say thank you very, very much. And we pray that many of us will do the same thing. We pray that the same thing uh, for many different things that we need to do. Now, let me also make a correction. Last week, the other week, we said that a window would be about 0.3, but we discovered it was uh, a mistake. It was supposed to be 700,000 chills per window. So we are saying if each family can do one or two windows, will be really good to go in the days ahead of us. And in this afternoon, leadership is meeting to see what we need to do to do the basics and get off this veranda. Amen. Okay, some of you are not tired of the veranda. We need to get off this veranda. But we must do the basics are in there. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, also we make, we request as men that please allow us ladies to use your bathrooms for only today because ours are really not going a lot of uh, good work. So please, only, only today, don't say, what's going on in this church? No, 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 no. Uh, we need to make sure we respect you, but what we need you as first because you are important to us. Amen. Okay, your name is Stan uh, and John. This year, our theme is Jesus at the center. Whatever you are, whatever you do, in your workplace, in your school, in your marriage, whatever it is, Jesus going to be at the center. Please allow me to invite uh, a woman of God to do the introduction of a very first sermon this year uh, as we launch our theme in the months and weeks ahead of us. We're going to spend a welcome and a Joan appeal. Come on, what do you mean? Oh, the children. Please, children, go to your classes. Uh, children, your teachers are waiting for you. Please, your teachers are waiting now. Go at those classes. Thank you very much. Let's welcome one more time 
Elder Joan Apile, please. Praise God. Amen. Praise King Jesus. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to honor you. We want to bless you. Yes, Lord. Father God, we want to commit ourselves to you. Yes, Lord. We want to commit our hearts to you. Our minds, God Almighty. Father God, we thank you that you have a message for the church. Yes, you have a message for your people. But Father, we are praying that no, nothing, no weapon, mm. no thoughts, nothing will interfere with anybody oh, in this place. Oh, Father God, we bind every satanic power, yes. everything around, yes. every thoughts, anything that would come yes. to the minds of people. We render them powerless. powerless. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. You have been here. We know you have been here. Oh, and we give you all the praise and oh, all the glory and all the honor. Amen. 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 I was asking the Lord this year, and uh, every year has its theme. There are so many messages from people, from different, different people. But it looks like all the messages is driving to the same point. It looks like uh, God is saying the same thing. This morning I was talking to to one of the uh, what is it? No, there is a lady. I've forgotten the name. But he was telling me, you have just preached exactly what God has been telling me to share with the people. Uh, my friend, Mrs. Ashara, she, you know, when she came, she gave the message. It was the message the Lord has been giving. It's not a coincidence. It's the Lord is speaking to everybody, everywhere this year, and to those who are ready to listen. Amen. Yeah, I have come to encourage you. God says that it is say the scripture as it is. Let's read the word of God. Proverbs 8 17 to 20. He says, I love those who love me. That is the scripture he gave me to give to the church, to give to you people. Read it on your own. Sometimes I just think maybe this is my own thinking, but I always ask God when I'm going to preach. I said, God, what is your message? I've been sharing in Uganda, in Uganda and the Uganda service, and it was not easy, but the Lord was with us. They understood. And, uh, you know, I told, I, as I said, I'm a bashful child. You know, I was a child, this child kind of children who move up and down, who is big to fix, hands on, everything I would do very quickly. And my father liked me for that because I always fixed things, but I also spoiled things. By being too quick, sometimes we spoil things. But uh, this I know that this is the character the Lord want to use later in life. I thank God that he speaks clearly to me. You know, being very noisy and quick and all that, sometimes I say, God, you know, I'm not, I don't hear you clearly sometimes. I want you to be very specific and clear. And usually God speaks to me when I'm sleeping. That's when he gives me the message. Because otherwise I would think it is all the message I know. There is a lot. You know, we know the message. We speak them. We share them. Uh, it, we, you know, it is like God gives you, I mean, you read the message and it is very lively to you. But when it comes to reality, that message might not even work for you. But you will even tell it to somebody. But when it comes to your condition, difficult, hard times, that scripture 
sometimes might not even you know, be relevant. Mm. We can speak it. But is it from the Spirit? Mm. God says, I love those who love me. Mm. And those who diligently seek me will find me. Hallelujah. Riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity are with me. You can continue or I read from the Bible. When God says it, that is it. Add nothing to it. Subtract nothing to it. When he says, those who diligently seek me, sometimes we listen to preaching, we read the Bible, of course, it says God loves everyone, for God so loved the word that he gave his only son. But here he says, I love those who love me. Hallelujah. How can I tell you my secrets unless you are my friend? Unless you love me? Unless I love you? So he says, those who diligently, diligently seek me, who seek me seriously, will find me. He continues, he says, riches and honor are with me. He lives in that way, the births of righteousness to endow those who love him with wealthy, those who honor him with wealthy and prosperity, enduring wealthy, that he may fill our treasuries. That word is very hard to take in especially when there is nothing in your pocket, when there is nothing to look to, when there is no property, you have no property, you have no land, you have no job, you know, that, that scripture looks really sometimes, somehow, very, very good, but irrelevant. But let's take it literally, because God has given it to us today. Amen. He loves those who love him. Amen. 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 But I thank God that in my understanding, I just love God. People, I love God, I'm not saying it because he's my witness. I love him, Amen. I hug him, I sometimes hug him. Sometimes I walk proudly in the house when nobody's seeing me in my bedroom, in my prayer rooms. And I tell him, God, I love you, but you love me the same. Sometimes a song comes, a song of praise. There is always a theme in my spirit, a song in my spirit. And I thank the Holy Spirit. Regardless of what problem I'm going through, it does not shake me. It will shake, of course, physically, but it will not bring me down. There is one time I was in one of my prayer rooms. I have, by the way, three altar rooms. Hallelujah. One is, is exact, it's especially mine, upstairs. We built this house during COVID. That is mommy's room, mommy's prayer room. Hallelujah. And they, I, my friends come and pray there. They stay there for days. Nobody disturbs them. There is water, there is whatever is needed. And that room is the, the minute I enter that room, there is a song immediately. As I click in the door, I'm singing. That's, you know, the second room, I dedicated it to the Lord much earlier. It has always been my room. It's for visitors, but when there are no visitors, that is my room. That is where God used to speak to me so, 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 so much. Sometimes I wish I could go back to that room. I, you know, he would show me, he would show me visions, he would tell me what is going on, but... The same room, when people sleep there, God gives them like a vision, like a, a scripture, you know, a message. And they, they always tell me, what is in this room, mommy? Even the pastors, even, you know, the prophets, they say, what is in this room? I said, it is an altar. I have, the, the whole house of course is an altar. I gave it all to God. Amen. But there are specifically, Places we should give to God. Each time you go there, the minute you enter that room, there is a song Amen. on your heart. There is a word in your spirit. And you just feel, it feels different. God is saying, let us take his word literally. 
He said, seek me and you'll find me. If you seek me sincerely, with all your heart, you will find me. How do we seek him? How do we seek God? Many times we go and look down. Many times we pray and fast because we have a problem. Many times we pray because there is a need and, you know, we fast. But many times, when you are a friend of God, you know, you just go and, and he hugs you. And you feel the hug. Ask him for it. Sometimes I say, God, hug me with your word. And uh, you know many times the enemy tells you, but you lied. You just cross-check yourself. Yes, I lied, but I was trying to save somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, and Satan, I'm covered by the blood. Hallelujah. Sometimes, they, they let nobody deceive you. We are born again, but we still, uh, we sin. As long as we are in this flesh and we continue, yes. there is sin. It might not be to the same magnitude, but there is sin. But the Lord said, if you seek him, closer to him. You know, when I'm tempted, a song mediator I, say, I sing, I go in two tongues. Sometimes when I rap, you know, like uh, this music goes on, I just go rap. I would sing, sing, praise, praise. And by the end of it, that problem is gone. When it is still existing, but my heart is free. One time I pinched myself to see if I am normal. Actually, I thought I was at normal. Because I had a lot, a lot, a lot of problems. Last year, people, it was hard for me. In many ways. But I pinched myself to see, am I normal? And the... You know, God told me, that is the peace, that's, you know, in my mind, they said, that is the peace of God, that transcends all the human understanding, mm. that guards your heart. Mm. Amen. Amen. Give a clap to God. <laughs> we need that peace unconditionally, no matter what you are going through. What problem are you going through? What difficult times are we going through? Me, I'm an evangelist. I can preach on one, one, one scripture as the Lord reads. One time I was offended somehow. I, did, I didn't make notes very well. But uh, as I was sleeping in that, one, that particular room, I asked God, what do you want me to share? I was going to a very big church where there are big, big people, very educated, all kinds of say all sense. And uh, I said, what will I tell them? And as I was preparing, I would prepare, I would prepare. Then as I slept, I had a vision. There was a man above the roof, the roof went off. There was somebody above the roof seated on a chair. And he had a very huge envelope. And he would get something from the envelope and give me and I put in my lesser envelope. My envelope was slightly smaller, of course, than his. I kept on putting on. And then, when I finish, I go back. He gives me and I put in. And I thought it was money because I was going through money issues. But what does an envelope? You know, I called my daughter. My daughter told me, Mommy, an envelope contains a message. That is when I knew, oh, so he's giving me a message. And when he gives, I go and give to the people like this, like this, like this. I go back. Me, I thought it was where the needed. But God was giving me the word to share with his people. Amen. And, uh, and that is when I realized, sometimes I would go to preach. I went to preach somewhere last, last year. Around November, November. This uh, all October, I went to preach. I had a sermon. It's a big church. People pray a lot. There are also very many intercessors in the church. But as I went to pray, God told me, "Close your file. I'm the one to give you the word." God gave me the word. I shared 
without notes, my notes were there, but I would pick the script apparently, God like that scripture would come. But the man of the church, the senior pastor, he went in the corner, he was crying all throughout. He cried, he cried. He said, woman of God, God sent you to me. God sent you to this church for, for a purpose. Because, you know, many people have been going to the church. This year is going to be different. This year is going to do this. This year, you know, prosperity, good life, and so on. But was that what, the God, what God was saying? Me, God was saying, God has come to change, to reshuffle. The church has to change. Forget that. We, you know, this, the chamu kiriza. The gospel that makes people, I then, hallelujah, you know, give, do this. No, that is not the gospel. The gospel, how many people have you led to Christ this year? How many people have run away from this church? This did I know that his wife had already left him. The wife is praying with the The man has a church, big church, and the wife is not there. But that day she was there because she knows I was going there. So, you know, let's preach the word. Let's take the word literally. When he said God gives you a rhema, there is robots in the whole Bible. You can, you know, you can pick all of them. No be a one is that you say, yes, this is this, this is this. But sometimes you have to know what did God say. Like he has told me, I love those who love me. And those who didn't seek me will find me. Seek me with all your heart. That's what he told me. And he told me, give it to my people. Seek God like you haven't, you have never done it before. Sometimes you have problems. The problems will go or will not go. He promised us he will give us a hundred faults in this world. Oh, yeah. And in the world to come, eternal life. But he said also suffering. Trials, tribulations will be there. How do you test? Unless you have gone through it. Right. So, whatever we go through, whatever I've been going through, it has brought me, it is sharpening, it has sharpened me. To know it does not have to be all rosy. I always had everything my way, everything. Oh, money, he is working, he is working. I reached a level where I did not have even 20,000 in my pocket, not even in my account. That time, I'll never forget it. And it, when I came out of it, it was that I learned to humble myself. I learned to know that people go through circumstances. It might not be money, it might be marriage, it might be sickness, it might be bad relatives, it might be witchcraft, it might be anything. But the word, find a word to stand on. But I always like God to tell me what to stand on. And one scripture leads to another all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. In everything we do, little or small, involve God. Involve God in every detail of your life. Doesn't matter how. God gave me land. Very big land in Weyabe. But the witches, you people, I did I did four acres, I got four bags. That means each acre had a bag. And I cried to God. I said, you know, I was busy telling him the scripture. God, you say, the Isaac planted in the desert during the famine. This and this and this. I told him, the nature turn, I would say, God, you say. But you say, you know, I went to churches where they talk to God, talking, walking. Telling him, bring, bring him to the memories of your word. You say, you say, my friend, go to President in seven and tell him, you say, but last year you say this, you say, uh, or go to, the, to, to anybody. Uh, and you see, they will even cast you out. Get out. Get this mad person out. But before God, he said, come into the holy of the holies. Enter by the blood of the Lamb. Come with the thanksgiving. Uh, Come with thanksgiving in your heart. Come with a theme in your heart, the song, the song of praise. There is a song I used to sing. A song of freedom is on my lips. Today, today, I sing for oh, the one I love. Today.
It is a good habit, not only when you need something from him, not when you have a need or a problem. Ask him for the strength to manage that first. This year, 2024, God is saying, this is our year. For those who seek him, we find him. Amen. And everything, he said, riches and honor with me. That scripture might have read it. But he says, when he says it, he has said it. Do it, you witness before God, that he said it and he will bring it to, to pass. Praise him. Dance, shout. Your spirit, your spirit man is energized. And praising is a weapon to the devil will not come. Moreover, people come to my home and they say, sometimes they say, but man, what you in the children, there is something here, there is an anointing here, there is a presence here. But you have to attract it. First thing I do when I'm washing things, when I'm doing breakfast, I'm praising, I'm worshiping. By the time I go to give hot breakfast to my husband, by the way, I, do not, I usually do breakfast because I know what he likes. So, uh, and uh, even if the worker does it, I still go and spice it up. And he, then he will notice me, even if it was the other one, me, I'll just do something little to show it was me. Yeah, and he always knows. <laughs> so, before I go to him, I already am in the spirit. Second, I always go telling him and done things and resolved issues. And what he's already got ready to tell me, he doesn't. God has already solved that. So we start speaking peace. Sometimes I go and kneel before him and tell him, Daddy, I'm sorry I wouldn't have said that. Knowing I'm born again, yet he was wrong. But knowing that I'm born again, I wouldn't have declared. I wouldn't have said. Don't think because people are over 70 years, they don't have problems. Married 50 years, they don't have problems. And ours are petty. They are not those gods big anymore. But still it brings you down. It can make him move the whole day. Or he just drives and goes to see his friends. And I've lost him. So what I do, I just go before him. I say, Daddy, I'm sorry. I was wrong. And many times my husband does not say, sorry, clearly I will say sorry. Since we got married, maybe I said it three times. Oh, yeah. I, I'm telling you. Of course, when I was a girlfriend, everything was sorry, 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 sorry. But, but after marriage, uh, yeah. that is, he would rather give me, he pulls in his pocket and solves my problems. But he will not say sorry. Uh, yeah. So, when you, you know all of that, he says, ah, you are saying this. Okay, here you are. I was asking 100,000, it was brought to the war. Now he puts half a million. He says, okay, here. And what I do, I'm going to do my work. My kids need money. My other friends, are, they need money. Other people are here. So, I know God uses different circumstances to steal success. <laughs> Joan, my daughter, is here. She knows how often I go to repent. <laughs> I will tell you, I groomed you. You will be a good wife. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew, Matthew 11, 11, 28 up to 13. Come unto me, all ye who labor, mm. and I will give you rest. Come unto me, come unto me, all you. Who, who labor, who are tired. Mujabwe na abakoye, I like it in Uganda. Mujabwe na abakoye, who are weary and abandoned, and I will give you rest. We are tired. Tukoye mberachi. Kuli muna ine mberachi akoye. If it is a child, if it is a husband, if it is a marriage, if it is finances, if it is need, if it is sickness, everybody has something somewhere. Which keeps, you know, like the devil tickles you with that to show you, mm hmm, here you are. Oh, yeah. There are times Satan even talks, comes to me and tells me, you prayed, so what did you get? Oh. There are many things, okay, so I might not share what, exactly what I shared in the first service. God had a message for the other people and for the fear of here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when I go to him, I say, God, 
I am laboring. I'm heavy-laden. I am restless. Father God, it's only you can do this. I no longer go like I used to go. I would go. So I had a place where I got all the scripture, all the spiritual warfare. I just go bombard the throne of God and tell him this, 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 this. But I've learned the hard way because it didn't work. In those days when I was ignorant, it worked. But not anymore. <laughs> I no longer get things like this. You know, my miracles were like popcorn at times. And I thought it was that, and I would preach to people. That's who don't I would see, they are not praying properly. Why do you carry problems? Why are you restless in that restless night? He says, Come to me, all you who labor, any zero, no matter how heavy they are. He said, You will carry them. This time you go in humility and humbly said, Father, you said that I never done heavy anything. Give me rest. And God always honors you. I, I used to pray sometimes I don't get a result, but I remember God reminded me much later about my son, Benjamin. You know that young man, when my husband was working in the bank, we had a little money as a young couple. And, uh, you know, the, he would give here and everything I would write, even to the cartoon, even to the selfie, even to what. So there was no surplus. So my son came, was driving, he went and rode the bicycle with the other people, they were riding. A certain boy said, Benjamin, look, I'm giving you. And as soon as he got on the bicycle, he told him, it's over, get off. And he took off the bicycle. He was about four or five. Oh. He came to me, cried in my chest. He said, Mommy, I don't who said he's giving me the bicycle. And when I started, I sat on, now see, he took it away, Mommy. Mommy, did you see? For him, there was no hope of getting a bicycle. I said, okay, I'll talk to Daddy. We shall buy a bicycle. But I went and talked to the father about the, the issue and how he cried. So he said, Benjamin, I'm going to buy your bicycle. But at that time, we used to have one bread, and I would take for breakfast, and I had another one for parking to go to school. That is how hard things were. So Benjamin would come to the father. He came after one week, Daddy, is it my birthday today? She said, no, it's not. What about my bicycle? He could do it very often, but he gently, so one day he went and came before the father and he sat down and said, Daddy, is, when is my birthday? Is it my birthday today? He said, no, it's not yet your birthday. But the father, and he would talk to him nicely, even as a child. And you know with the children, there is no pretense. There is no trying to entice. He came. Daddy, you said you'd buy me a bicycle on your birthday. No, my birthday. When is my birthday? And the dad went and borrowed money. He took a loan. He borrowed the money, bought two bicycles. One was a BMX. It had everything that is needed in a good bicycle. Wow. And the other one was good, all right, for the girls. But he, well, he had to have a bicycle loan, and the girls shared. The rest shared. And God told me, if Benjamin knows how to pray. Why don't you pray the same? So I learned the hard way and uh, I started asking my heavenly father like a child. I said, Father, I'm in a big way with you. In a big way with you. Well, when I went to my land in Weyare, it was not productive at all. So I went with my friends and we went to pray. The rain would come and it passed my hill, my place, my hill. And go to the next, I would see the next, it is raining, but it is not raining. Uh, that place had witches. Who had witches, and one man told me, and they said, Paida is the worst, where you plant a bean now, and in the evening it has sprout. sprout. I've been told, and the people tell to say it is true. So, I said, well, what do I do? We prayed, and I went, 
simple like a child. I went and talked to God. I went to the place for days. I would sleep in a rest house. And I would go every day, walk around, we pray. Another woman joined me, we prayed. The other people prayed. But God changed the whole thing. Hallelujah. I granted, as I was asking him, somebody called me and said, John, I have a tractor. Uh, do you, it could be only 60 acres. Instead of being a bush. So I got, but you buy fuel. I did, I bought fuel, I bought the tractor and the workers. Of course, I have some loose there, I can use rot and give them, everybody works happily. And they, they finished what they did. They didn't do all the six, I was not ready to, to do all the fuel and, and allowance. But I did the 14 acres of maize. And by yesterday, they told me they haven't finished, but they've got already 40 bags. 40 bags. That are, that are four tons. And they are still harvesting. And I want to go there next week to boost the map and see what is going on. Uh, but I planted cassava, many 10, 15 acres, but only 10 is now working. And the Sudanese are already eyeing it. So, but it, it took me, it took pain to go before the Lord. Otherwise, I was uh, taking things for granted. You said, you said, you said. We shall be above not being. We shall be plant and we do. You were the one who causes the, the, you know, the germination. If the rain comes for the poor, bad and the weak. Why was it coming for the witches and not for me? They are, we have to go above, beyond that. See. What is the word saying? And take it literally and take it before the Lord because it is his word. And he cannot deny himself. Amen. 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 Yes. You can cast your burdens to Jesus. Like he says, cast your burdens unto Jesus. For he cares for you. Sing a song as you pray. You know, I interrupt my prayers and sing. As I... I just find songs as pray more songs than, than prayers. And I know I'm praying through the song. Sometimes if it is a verse, one or two, I add on verses, verses, verses. This day I was praying. And God hears that. People, we have been given a privilege and a mandate. What burden are you carrying? Cast it to him. Do not stress yourself 20, 24. Those who stand upright, those who walk upright, God is going to reward you because this is his word. This is what he said. He did not give it to me alone. He told me, give it to the church. And we've had similar messages from different, different people. But this was the person. He gave it to me in my sleep. Because in your you think it is what everybody has been saying. Praise God. Amen. Mm. Pray with simplicity. Do not complicate or over spiritualize your prayers. Pray every time, whenever you are, whether you are driving, whether you are washing, pray. Give that praise. And God is hearing. He's hearing. Oh, who is praising me? You will find so and so is praising, regardless of the problems they're going through. And He honors His word. Amen. Isaiah 55. It says, for as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and, and returns not hither, but waters the earth, and makes it bring forth, and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. You see, all those are our pro promises. Those are all the Lord's promises. Amen. Now go before the Lord. Let it become a rhema. And once he said, So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth, it will not return to me empty, void, but we accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. I was, you know, quoting that scripture. 
But when the witches taking you over, yes. was I to harvest him? No, no. But until I know what it is now, Hallelujah. I go come into his presence with thanksgiving, Hallelujah. come with the praise, come with the humility, and forgive whoever you hold. Forgive whoever you hold Hallelujah. in repentance. We can repent him in the sins that are not there sometimes. For him is telling you, come with the thanksgiving, come with the praise. He loves the praise. That's why they are praising him in heaven four times. Cherubim and seraphim, holy, holy, holy. He loves the praise. What does he want? Does he want your money? He's the giver of God and sin is his. Everything. The jobs you have, what you have, even you yourself, you are his. So, now, come to another level of humility and of knowing that he is able and he will accomplish that which he said. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, let's do Roman 8. Ro Romans 8, 31, 39. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? We know these scriptures, we read them every day, we quote them every day. But now, let's know if he's for us, who can be against us? Witches, bad people in offices, fit enough, the devil is attacking your marriage. If God is for us, who can be against us? Only if we can take it out of the Bible pages and write it in our hearts and make it a rhema word. It will not work for us. So, let us go boldly before the throne with humility and God will indeed do it. David, the king, God chose him, said you are going to be a king. He, he was actually rejected from what I can gather. You know that area where there, the big work boys were there, everybody, but was always the one sent to look after sheep. Going to the, to the forest, the father didn't bother that this is a young boy. Anything can happen to him. So, he would send him and the other big ones stay home with the father, do other things until they are going to war, when they are called of age. But David, while he would be there, he would praise God, he would worship. That is why he was able to kill the bear and the lion. A young boy killing a bear and a lion. Who was that? The spirit of God. Right. The spirit would wear him. Right. You know, and he, you have seen people who are demonized. You try to hold them about four, four men. Hold somebody and they cannot. They try, they fail. How much more is the spirit of God when he wears you and you kill a lion? You kill a lion, you kill Goliath, you do all that. And this was a man who was going through hardship. But during that hardship, that is when he composed Psalms. He was not idle. He was not telling God, you told me, you told me I would be a king. Now I look at this. He went to Abimelech. He was, uh, you know, he became mad. He had to be like mad, you know, throwing saliva. So that they leave him, they don't attack him. Because they would say, this is David who fought Goliath. This is the one who they are saying killed 10,000 and saw a thousand. But he had to make himself mad. And he would walk with the slivers broken. They said, what do you bring this mad man for? And God was keeping him. That was wisdom, by the way. Hallelujah. <laughs> if, he, if he just went and he said more psalms and psalms, ah. they would have gotten him. But he had to do that to be able to convince the king is not an enemy. But for him, he would not know what he was doing. He was running away. He was in a safety. David, he, God said that he's going to be a king. But he spent so many years going, hiding in the caves, being what, being what. And yet he knew the word was composing the word. And for him, he was even composing. For us, we are reading what is written for us. We are very blessed. This generation is spoiled. We have 
everything. The people of old, they didn't have a manual, but we have the manual. And at the same time, you know, we just did that. We read a little here and a little here. But David, in every situation, he gave thanks to God. In Psalm, Psalm 34. Yes, that is when he was with Abimelech. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. And this is an inspiration. Somebody is running. Saul is looking for him. And for him, he says, praise the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. His mouth. He's praising him for what? For, de for deceiving him. And another person will say, Mukama wa nima. Wa ngamba gotu, wa ngamba gotu, wa ngamba gotu, katibino, webit, webit, webit. So, for him, the spirit of the Lord was with him. He had the spirit of the Lord. That is why he always found a song of praise. That is why he always found a song of praise on his heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, 119. Psalm 119. 164. He said, Seven times a day do I praise thee because of your righteous judgment. I don't know what he was going through by then. Maybe he was already king, he doesn't state. But he said, Seven times a day. You know, some people, like the Muslims, apparently, they pray seven times a day. They go somewhere. Each time, you know, the Muslims who work for me, work for me when I was building. They would immediately, the time comes, they would take the, the mat and go there and start, you know, to serve. And I said, what is it even? Imagine they've done it all this time, they are doing it. And for us, we are very busy quarreling with the workers, you know, seeing and done things. You know, why can't we do it seven times? Whatever you are doing, when you are working, give, give praise. Amen. Give a song. If you cannot pray physically, recite a scripture. Sing a song. So, I write, you know, he will praise the Lord seven times. We can do the same. Right. So, praise your way to victory. Praise your way to victory. We have a song in it in Rwanda. It says, keep on praising, praising, praising. The devil will have no entrance when you don't stop praising. Keep on praising, praising, praising. Hard shit, hard things will wear out when you don't stop praising. That has been my weapon and people, it works. Amen. If I was to sit with the individual and I tell you what I've gone through since I got saved, we would say this woman, Manang, but I'm not here to praise myself. I'm here to give you encouragement. Amen. And there is nothing wrong if you copy me. Try it, you will see. It will work. Many people have ways. Imagine what Pastor Godson went through. When he started, when we left the uh, Umasho ground, when we went to, to Bokoto, when he came here, says, this year, next year we'll be here. Next year we'll be here. You think you'll be sleep? You say it is a burden on him which I can't carry, which nobody is able to carry here. But do you know why is he still standing and he can still preach the gospel? When he says next year, that faith next year, but here is the Shandaranama. You know, when you don't know how to pray, pray in tongues. Yes. Me, every morning before I wake up, I'm in tongues for about 30 minutes minimum or an hour. Hallelujah. And when I wake up, you know, I love tongues because sometimes I don't know what to pray. When you see me dancing, you, you people, when you put on your, your music here, when you are singing, me, I'm Shandara Lingini. You know, with a song, with a rhythm, it always goes on very, very well. Hallelujah. And I know I have prayed. So people, 
May God Almighty, may God Almighty answer you. May He make you an instrument at your place of work, in your business. We need everybody in every sector, on the seven hills, there should be representatives of us from EFM and from other places. But what I'm asking you, be that representative. I like the daughter of Dorothy. Doreen. That girl, you know there is a spirit, the Holy Spirit. You sense, you don't dialect. If she continues to be like that, if she's mentored like that, she will be a great woman. People, thank you for your children. Thank you for your children. I see that when you bring them here, others will just say, ah, they would now be on the cartoons or, you know, they tell you, I'm not coming to church. They can't say that. What will you do? Will you put a rope in them? They refuse to pray. Will you put a rope in them? But you pray them into prayer. Before you call them to pray first, pray and you call them. Even if it means kiboko, me, I used to beat them hard. Oh, yeah. If nobody comes, you will not eat bread. You will not eat a cake on Sunday. Ah. So, they had to pray when they were young. Now that they are preaching the gospel, they are doing the same with their children. And I thank God. It is, you know, you lay a foundation that will always be there, even when you grow. Like, train a child the way they should go. And when they grow, they will not depart from it. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument. Oh. Lord, make me an instrument. Do you know that song, people? Yes. How many people know it? Uh, the old people. Yes. There is one we had in the morning. Yes. Yeah, we had the end up in that one. Heavenly Father, in the name of oh, Jesus, Father. we pray that this Message God yes. goes deeper into the recess mm. of our hearts. Oh, right. Father, let us know it's not about us, it's all about you. Oh, yeah. Father, let us know that you inhabit the presence of your children. Father, we praise you in big and little. Yes. Father, we praise you when we have or when we don't have. Father, we praise you when we are anointed, even when we don't feel anointed. Father God Almighty, we ask you in your mercy, God Almighty, touch your people, touch their heart, strengthen them. There has been a lot of challenges, God, in the past year. But say, you forget the former things. Father God, oh God, where are we going to turn away with you? Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mukama to take away it. If you get to a day to Sabia, if you have a to Kavia, if you have a day to Zibu, Mukama to Tangi, Tuka no Kuni at the Wazia Satan, Tuka no Kuni at contrary spirits. Father God Almighty, we will praise you all through all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let us appreciate you know, John for that awesome word, and I'm sure that none of us will go empty handed, but rather keep that word strong, and the year will help us to uh, as to God be able to seek God more than ever before and reap the reap their, their fruits out of it. Amen. Lord, we need to thank you for the word we have got today. We pray we don't just hear the word, but be doers of the word. Do as as we seek you. You have said in your word that you love those who love you. Many times love is supposed to be expressive. When a man and woman love each other, the expressions. I pray that God will too do the same Jesus. To express our love and gratitude through prayer, through fasting, through fellowship, through devotions, through 
generosity and giving through evangelism and soul winning. Lord, help us that our love will be real for you. And we seek you every other day, oh Jesus. But I know you are servant once again. And even as we bring our time and offering at this time, may you bless our giving. Father, we thank you. We give us more prayer. Amen. Amen. Um, the instrumentalist. Um, um, meanwhile, I'll pass on the announcements. Uh, let's clap our hands and we thank God for the awesome wives. Um, those let's thank God for the progress for the construction, both the church and the washrooms. Please continue sending in those cash contributions until the Lord's house is completed. All the holy name makers that have not yet registered the holiday program, please endeavor to do so today. There's only one week left to get to the holiday program. And we need to plan in advance. The youth holiday program will begin on 22nd January up to 24th January for children, 3 to 12 years. From 25th to 27th, the same month, we will host children 13 to 20 years. On Sunday, 28th, we shall have a children Sunday, and we'll have only one service running from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then a children's bash from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Every child is requested to contribute 10,000 shillings only as you register at the table. Please note that there will be no overnight this month. We will hold the monthly overnight in the month of February on the last Friday. Um, as our tour is going on, we're going to leave in as, as soon. Oh, let's get up on our feet.
gold I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plays my cause and executes judgment for me. But he will bring me out of the light, out of the light, sorry. I shall look upon his, his vindication, then my enemy will see, and shame will come, will cover her who say to me, Where is the Lord your God? Today I want to encourage each and every one of us going to this week. Every situation you face thus far is going to end in prayer. There's no situation that you bring before the Lord that you have faced for thus far. Within his plan, it's going to end in prayer. So let's sing this chorus one more time. Oh, the leaders, the leaders meeting. 